Steve, can you tell me a bit about Paddley and Venables, please? Paddley and Venables, we've been uh, in existence for approximately 105 years or so at the moment. We make mining and contra contractors tools, uh, rock drill, and we also do heat treatment, our own heat treatment. And I notice you've got some automation behind this on this impressive cell. Why did you decide to automate your process? We was coming to the time where we had to renew some of our lays, older lays, and we thought we'd take the opportunity at the same time to automate it and hopefully speed the process up. Does that happen? It has, yeah. Uh, we, uh, we are getting probably uh, 30 or 40 percent more uh, work out of the cell and we can also run it at times between shifts unmanned. And we've been invited in by yourselves and Bloom Nova Test to review their Digilog. How important has the Digilog been as part of this process? Very important. It's a case if we hadn't got the Digilog on it, we couldn't run it as a robotized cell without uh, the, gate, the guy having to put a gauge on the, the component every time. That's an important point, isn't it? So a lot of people automate the process, but they're still inspecting the part at the end. But that's kind of pointless, isn't it? You, you need to make sure the part is correct. That's right, yeah. It's pointless having a guy standing here all the time. The production slows down as the door has to keep opening and closing. Whereas the probe, if it's intolerance, it says it's intolerance and the machine carries on. If it's not intolerance, the probe turns different colour. The machine stops until we sort it out. That's important because I know these are going to miners and let's face it, they're not always engineers, are they? You know, either, it's either right or it's wrong. That's right, we're trying to keep a, a quality product. Our product's got to interact with other manufacturers' products because not all our uh, customers buy 100% off the company. They do mix and match, so uh, our stuff's got to fix, fit everybody else's, so that's why we need to keep the sizes in a close tolerance. So I know this, you've got Fanuc and, and Doosans on this cell, but Bloom, you're happy? If you did it again, would you buy more Bloom? Certainly, yeah. We're just looking at the moment in looking at another Bloom project, a cook tool breakage system, which we're in the process of looking at. David, this is the first Digilog I've ever seen. What does it do? Uh, it's a probe for inspecting the workpiece in situ um, to ensure it conforms to the, to the correct standard so it can then go on to the next process or to be passed off uh, before it comes off the machine tool. And it seems obvious question, but what's the benefit? The, the, the big benefit, of course, is that traditionally they would have a guy standing here who would have to manually gauge each component. Uh, with a Digilog, we're fully automating the system, so the, part, the machine will, will turn the, the thread on the part our Digilog will then come in and do a scan to ensure that the part's correct and there's no operator involvement that can run it through the night 24-7. I guess if you can't inspect the component, there's no point automating it, you may as well load it as well. Exactly, it's that, you know, this whole cell is a, a pretty impressive investment that the customer's made with fully automated loading of the, of the parts, but if they have to have a guy standing here manually checking it, then it defeats the objects of the whole cell really. So we are completing the process, completing the close loop, loop if you like, to ensure that we are inspecting everything automatically before it goes on to the next operation. Yeah, I do see a lot of that where parts are coming off complete, you know, via various methods of automation, but they're not inspecting them. It kind of seems pointless, doesn't it? Yeah, it, it's, it's kind of down to the application and the, and the need of the product, but the, the theory of what we're trying to say is that if you make sure that the part, when it comes off the machine, is correct, so it, you, hopefully you don't scrap the part, which is disastrous, or uh, you know, have to rework a part, then it can go on to the next operation or, to, or out the door with no further in, uh, work needed on there. And I'm just looking at this graph here. It appears to be like an SBC chart, so have you got an up and a lower limit? That's right, yeah. Basically, uh, we're showing on the software here, the, the Bloom BCS software, we're showing two screens, two results. But on the bottom one, you can see the nominal, so that's what a good component looks like. And the white scan across the top is actually the result of the, the component just being measured. Now, ideally, we want to see those absolutely bang in line with each other. From that then, the yellow lines are the wear limits. So if the tool starts to wear, we'll see that the, the results will start to go outside those limits. That won't stop, stop the operation, but it will alert the operator that there's probably a problem with either thermal uh, situation of the machine or the tool's wearing. And then the red lines are the extreme limits. That's where we have a problem and we have to stop and have to look at, you know, the operator has to look and see what's, uh, what's going on.
It's about automating, it's about taking away the need for an operator to sit here, getting involved with the process and to make life easier in the, in the manufacturing. And it's also a great endorsement for you. It, it, you know, it's a harsh machining process, isn't it? Yeah. There's coolant everywhere, there's swarf flying everywhere, yeah. and your product still holds up. Yeah. It's nice that we're showing this application on a turning machine, which are traditionally probably the worst machines to, to get probing on. You obviously, you get a lot more vibration in these machines. The swarf is particularly a problem, and there's a lot of coolant flying about. So here we can show the, prob the, the probe working you know, seamlessly, repeatable uh, results from it in, in real harsh, nasty environments.